Yeah, I'm here today with Nick Salek. We're going to do a couple more body parts, starting with chest. Welcome, Nick. We're here at Doherty's gym today, ready to train. You've got a fine physique on you there, son. And hopefully we can show you a few uh, hints as to, to train your muscles even better. And you can show us the ethic that's bought you, built you that body. Show us how hard you work out. And uh, let's get the technique right to show the viewers how important it is to use good form so they can develop a physique like yourself. Let's go, Nick. We'll start off with the bench press. The bench press uh, we're going to demonstrate is generally accepted as the number one chest builder. And it is, particularly for beginners. As you become more advanced, you need more variety. But to start up with there's nothing better than the bench to develop those pecs so here we go Nick let's show him the good form that you have son Nick's going to lift the weight off you'll note that his hands are a bit wider than his shoulders that his elbows wrists and shoulders are all in a line and he drives it up fast off his chest so you come down slow with the movement and drive it straight up with a bit more power than what you come down you do need to control it and time and time again you'll see people bouncing the weight off their chest and not using explosive power this is only a warm-up weight and you'll see already that nick's letting it down slow and driving it off with some force using those fast twitch muscle fibers to get the weight moving and that's what develops your strength base which is just as important as putting on size one of the important things with the bench is to make sure that you keep your wrist, elbow and shoulder in a straight line with the bar. Push it up, Nick. You see he almost rotates his elbows back to keep it under the bar and straight back up. The reason we do this is it keeps the power under the bar and it's a natural action to push it up. If you have your elbows too far forward or too far back, it puts a lot of stress on the shoulders and takes away from the chest. Fantastic work, Nick. That's really good form. To develop a good, full and balanced chest, you need to attack it from every angle possible. Flat benches alone won't do the trick. We've moved now onto an incline bench, which is about a 30 degree angle, completely changes the movement in that it brings the pecs more into it, particularly the upper pecs, which sit up under your chin and give you that big shelfy chest appearance. He brings it down close to his chin, you see right down touches his chest and drives it up. Once again you'll see that his wrists, elbows and shoulders are in a dead straight line with the bar and that's what's important in this movement. If you want to isolate your chest and get a full range of motion you need to do that. If you poke your elbows far too forward your triceps and shoulders will try and do all the work. This is a chest workout so we're trying to isolate the upper, the upper pecs and he's doing that beautiful. You let the bar down slow and then drive it off with a bit of force. A couple more reps there Nick. The Smith machine is another way of doing incline presses. This uh, Smith machine basically moves that the weights are always moving straight up and down as with gravity. This is just another variety, another way of attacking the chest from a different angle. If your gym's got a Smith machine, try it out with an incline press because it's a great exercise for those upper pecs. Let's go, Nick. Down slow and drive it up. Drive it straight up. Stick your chest out at the top of the movement. Down slow and up. All the way up at the top. And you've got to lift your chest up when you get to the top of the movement. There's no point in staying there flat. To do that, you best have your back arched, your chin up and your chest out. Just do a few more reps there for us, Nick. And you'll see his upper chest working there on the weight. Perfect angle and a little bit different than when we do it with the free weight, therefore giving us a variety that we're looking for. We thought we'd do some machine movements because they're a great way to throw even more variety into your chest press. And this once again is an incline. So we've done a barbell incline, a Smith machine incline, and now a pro arc machine incline. What we've got to do with this is have your chest up, arch your back, stick your chest right out, Nick, and push up, drive it to the top, pause slightly at the top with your chin up and your chest out. And that'll keep all the tension on your chest. Keep your head up and really stick that chest out. And you can see Nick now is getting quite a lot of blood into his chest and... Uh, it's really starting to pump up. This is what it's all about, is finding those different angles, shocking the muscle, and that's what makes it grow. If you do the same thing day after day after day, it won't grow. If you don't have all this variety of equipment, then you can vary your repetitions, your amount of sets, and the order that you do things in. We'll give you lots of hints about that as we go, but this is Nick on a pro arc incline press, once again working those upper pecs. At this stage, you're probably thinking that we're obsessed with inclines. We are. There's no better way to build a big upper chest than variety of incline presses. This is the fourth different incline movement we've done, and we're now doing dumbbell incline presses. Once again, you can vary the angle. This works good for us here. Um, as you come down, you hold the dumbbells as if they're a barbell, in that your hands are in a straight line, as if it's a bar, and the difference is you can squeeze it at the top. You can get your training partner to put their hand in there carefully. Come up, Nick, and try and crush my hand. One, two. And Nick pushing those dumbbells together causes more tension, right? Helps the muscle to flex and puts his mind into the muscle that he's training. If you're lacking any feeling in your chest when you're working out, try this technique that Nick's doing. Come up and squeeze them together and hold it for one and two and three. Now, you might have to vary your weights when you learn these techniques because suddenly lighter weights will seem heavier. That's because your muscle's doing the work and flexing just where it should flex. Well done, Nick.
We've got Nick now on the peck deck doing a fly movement. Slightly different than doing a dumbbell fly. The weight's more controlled, therefore you can concentrate more on isolation. And you'll see as he comes in and, and holds his, his hands together and pushes the weight, you'll see all the striations, all the lines in his chest as he's flexing like mad. This is our final exercise for chest, and you'll see it really, really finishes him off. And it's total isolation, a full range of motion, and very, very strict the way we do it. The reason he holds his hands together at the end here, one, two, is to force his muscle to flex. This is teaching him to put his mind in the muscle. As long as you do that, you can't go wrong. We've just finished an awesome chest workout, and Nick's pumped. We're going to get him to show you a couple of poses because he's in contest shape. First of all, Nick, can you do a side chest and show the viewers those pecs that we've just pumped up? So you can straight out, just do your side tricep from there, Nick. Drop your hand down into your tricep pose. This one's a tricep shot, but it still shows off the chest. If you haven't got thickness in your chest, you can't look like that. And you see all the ripples right here through his chest. That's what we're after. And that comes with definition. All the training in the world won't do that. Good supplements, good nutrition, rest, diet, and all that sort of thing can bring out those extra striations. As you'll see, Nick's very, very pumped. And that's how you should be after a chest workout. Because if you're not feeling it, we're doing something wrong.